That concludes the shock phase. We go up to mutual artillery fire phase now. Four pounder is going to fire up the hill. 30 is not going to do it. Like I said, it's someplace in the teens for a percentage hit if I was to look it up on the chart. Then comes small arms fire. Well, there's nothing going outside here, but we do have effectively six, a four figure and a two figure firing across over there. So we'll do the four figure first. Now with a 28, this is really low percentile shooting. And the Fry Corps up the hill, missed two. French Leger firing back at the Fry Corps, they roll the 72, that's a miss. I could run these numbers through the charts, but for somebody who's really intent, they should just look at the charts and examine it. Going on to the third turn. Well, the French outside the walls are pretty much in disarray trying to come back into the walls, so we're not even going to attempt that. But there is a chance that this battalion might win a fight inside the walls to actually take control of the entire castle. And that's sort of a default clause. If at the end of the third turn, if there's a French unit and the Piedmontese still in the blue and yellow zones, then it's each side has to shock combat each other. That means it's two shocked combat rolls. There's no firing or anything of that nature. It's winner takes all. So now let's do the results. Remember, we're doing two shock combats here, one from each side's point of view. So to survive and stay in the castle, you have to have or win, effectively, both fights. Well, we've got French here. We'll start them off. They've got seven figures, so they've lost a figure, plus the general. And there's no modifiers here for terrain or anything of that nature. This is considered open ground. So we've got a, a natural uh, seven, lost a figure is a six, general makes them a seven. The best Piedmontese defense is going to be this unit here, but the French are considered attacking everybody in this position here. So it's going to be an 8, disordered is a 6, officer is a 7. So it's a 7 to a 7, 100% fight, dead even. This is from the French's point of view. They roll a 4, dead even fight, it's DR for the defender. So that forced the Piedmontese to retire. They're all going to come up here into the red zone. Now let's do the fight going back the other way. We know the French are already a 7 for their defense, and we know the Piedmontese are a 7 on the attack. We've got 6 figures attacking 7, so it's a 75% with a 0 differential again. They win it. So it's a tied result. So what happened here, from our point of view, is the French will be retiring out of the castle automatically. The Piedmontese will have to retire back up to the red zone. And they lose a figure, and the French lose a figure. So the result actually was a D1, DR1. Both sides have got officers at risk, so Del Carreto, he survived. And the French general survived. So the French were forced out of the castle and have to retire back down the hill. As a morale disordered unit. The Piedmontese were forced up into the upper bailey by the action of the results of the two Malay rolls. And up here they've exceeded the result, so I have to do a morale check for each unit to see if they actually survive. The two-figure unit passed. Um, the regular Grenadiers rolled an eight, so they passed. And the Fry Corps rolled a three, so they passed. So everybody passed, so there's no additional losses here. But I'm going to have to, since this is the end of the third turn of the second assault segment, and there's no Frenchman in the castle, the Piedmontese automatically get to come back and redeploy in the original zones. And so ends the second assault segment. Now before I continue and start with the third assault segment, there's one thing I do have to remember to do. When the Piedmontese originally routed up here in the end of the last second segment, I had to take an extra morale check for one, the routers passing this Fry Corps, and for each of these two Piedmontese units to rally up. Simply because Remember, they had a dis they were in morale disorder here, and they got no disorder results, so they actually were routing up here. So I've rolled those numbers, and they all passed, and they came back, and I redeployed the Piedmontese back in. Otherwise, the castle would have probably fallen, or just had the Fry Corps as the only remaining unit, if these two Grenadier units did not rally up. So with all the bookkeeping done and all the rallying done, we are now faced with the third assault segment here. Third assault segment starts right now. 
First things up is the MFP phase. We've done all the accounting for that. Here comes the Sardinian charge phase, declaration phase. They have no cavalry, so we pass by that. They've done their rallying rolls. And notice I've started everybody in good order up here on the hill. Between the assault segments, everybody rallies up to fully completed good order. Same thing applied for those French units that were routing off the end of the table at the end of the day. I had to do a morale check to see if they would return for the third assault segment. They all did pass. So everybody's willing for a fight on the third segment. After the Piedmontese charge declaration phase, they've done the rallying phase. It's now going to be the French movement. This is going to be the grand assault. It's either make it or break it for the French. I've concluded the French movement phase, and as you can see, they're really going in for it. They've only left basically a couple of the weaker battalions from the prior assaults in the background because they obviously are much weaker in style and size. So let's see what happens. French movement is done. Now comes the command phase. Del Calretto is going to attach himself to the Fry Corps because he hopes his grenadiers can do their own job at the same time. As you can see, there's now three French generals involved including Jobert, Barnier, and Crayon. You should know by now what the next segment is after the French movement. It's the command phase, so all the generals have been attached to three different columns coming in, and I attach Del Calaretto to the Fry Corps. With that being said, what we now have is the shock phase. But it's not the French shock phase, it's the, it's the Piedmontese shock phase, and they're not doing any shock at this moment because they didn't declare it in the last half of the turn. So it's going to come strict down to the mutual artillery fire phase, but the French four-pounder is crowded out by the masses of French swirling around the castle walls. So there's no artillery fire phase, that means it brings us up to the infantry small arms fire. All the French will not be firing because they're all doing a shock mode, so it could be coming out issuing from the Piedmontese themselves. Okay, we've got four figures of Fry Corps, it's a 48% shot. They rolled a 90. Didn't inflict any losses. We have a three-figure Grenadier. 62. No losses. And a little two-figure unit left over. They rolled a 40-something. Didn't cause any losses. So the opening volleys from the Piedmontese didn't inflict any losses on the French coming in. This is in the mutual infantry fire or small arms fire phase of the first half of the first turn. With that done, we've now completed the first half of the first turn. Going on to the second half of the first turn. This is now when the Piedmontese are going to be making their movement phase. But first we come to the MFP phase, which we've all done. With the cavalry declaration phase, which we omit. French rally phase, as nobody needs to be rallied because they're all in good order. So it becomes actually the Piedmontese movement phase. They're going to hold pat, which brings us up to the command phase, which all the generals and everybody is attached to what they're going to be attached to, which brings us up to the shock combat phase for the French. You got a decision. Which one's going first? Well, my motto is always send in the best ones first. So we're going to start right here. Actually, yeah, we'll start with this unit. So first, the Piedmontese for or the Austrian Fry Corps have to roll to receive. They are a base 6. Wall gives them 2 is an 8. And Del Calaretto being in the area gives them a 9. And they roll a 6, so they pass. So now they're going to fire and a double effect into the French in advance column. So that's a 96 percentile, we know that chart. They roll a 96 on the nose. That being said, 5% chance for the French officer, 27, nope. And for the morale for the individual unit, they roll a cock die, they roll a 1. That means they're going to be up in the upcoming shock phase. We'll see what happens. Okay, now we've got to go to the shock combat. Best defense for this zone is going to be their 6. Del Carreto gives them a 7, and they get 3 for the wall that makes them a 10. French Leger are a 7, lost a figure. He's going to take them down to a 6, but the general is going to add back 1, which makes them a 7. So it's a 7 to a 10, it's a minus 3, and it's 6 to 4 on a 150% chart. A 4, which is a disorder retire for the French assault. So they're going to fall back, do a quick check on the officer, since he's not going to be involved in any malaise anymore. Ought seven. The future Joubert just got wounded. And if I roll through the officer wound table, he took it in the right arm, and it's going to be a light wound. So he's going to be out of it for a while. A couple of turns in our game. Historically, he did get wounded by a fall by somebody chucking a rock on his head.